Since I have existing geometry in place, I can use one of the bolt's faces as a sketch plane instead of the default front, right, or top. I'll switch to the sketch tab and click the sketch button. Instead of showing the default sketch planes for me to choose, SolidWorks gives me a message to select an entity to sketch on. When I hover over an edge or face on the model, the geometry highlights, letting me know that I can use it to sketch on. The default planes are still available as well, but I'll need to select them from the Feature Manager design tree, which is found by expanding this arrow at the top of the graphics area. Since I want the cylinder to connect to the bolt head, I'll select the large, flat front face on the bolt. SolidWorks activates sketch mode and rotates the screen normal to the sketch plane. Think of the sketch plane I'm in now as an infinite imaginary plane placed on the selected face that tells SolidWorks where in space the 2D sketch will be located. To show you what I mean, I'll sketch a simple rectangle next to, but not directly on, the part face. I'll then rotate the view, and since I drew the rectangle using a model face as a reference, the new sketch is in line with the face, instead of the default front plane that the bolt head was drawn on. Sketching on faces is an indispensable function when creating additional geometry in your parts, as it lets you make sure they're connected, no matter how the geometry is oriented. I'll switch the orientation to the front view using the spacebar, and since I want the post to be attached to the pinhead, I'll delete the example rectangle, press the F key on the keyboard to fit the part better on screen, and activate the circle tool. I want the cylindrical post to be centered on the pinhead, so I'll select the origin as my starting point and drag outwards to place the circle. The sketch is underdefined, as you can see in the status bar, so I need to place a dimension to finish it. I'll activate the Smart Dimension tool, select the circle, and give it a diameter of 30 millimeters. I'll press Enter to confirm the change, then hit Escape to exit the tool. With the circle fully defined, I'm ready to extrude it to create the post. I'll press the spacebar and switch to an isometric view. Then I'll activate the extrude tool, making sure to use a blind end condition so that the post extrudes in the same direction that the pinhead did, and then drag the arrow to about 75 millimeters to set the distance. I'll click OK to accept the changes and end the command. With that, another Boss Extrude feature is added to the feature tree, and the pin is created. If this is your first time using SolidWorks, congratulations! You've made your first part. What started as a simple idea was broken down, turned into a sketch, and pulled out into 3D geometry, all thanks to some commonly used design tools. In the next lesson, I'll go over how to edit what I've created here to account for any design changes or specifications I need to adhere to.